Today, Voices from Oxford has a very big privilege in being able to talk to one of the professors here in the university, Professor William James, who has been working on a very, very important medical problem. Most of our viewers will know how big a problem AIDS and the HIV virus is. So, William, Dennis. first of all, a fundamental question. I suspect that many of the viewers of this program will not really know what the difference between a bacterium, and we all know about bacteria on our skin, in mm -hmm. our gut and so on, you take antibiotics Absolutely. and you get rid of it. The difference between that and a virus is very important, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It is. In, the, in practical terms, it's very important because um, bacteria are susceptible in principle to antibiotics. So because bacteria are full living organisms in their own right, they have their own metabolism, you can disrupt that with antibiotics, with chemicals, yes. and so obviously things like penicillin and so on work on bacteria. Yeah. But viruses are not complete cellular organisms exactly. in their own right. They depend on disassembling themselves and working inside your own cells, mm. and so they can't be treated with standard antibiotics. Yes. So outside a cell, they're effectively dead? They're effectively... Uh, I don't like to use the word dead, because no. that suggests you don't come back from the dead, do you? No, but they, no, are, indeed, they yes. are cryptobiotic, if you like. OK, I see the idea. Yes, they're Even like seeds or pollen or something the, that, can, that exactly, lays dormant which, for a very long time. Yes. It contains the inf biological information you need yes. to establish infection when it enters a That's cell. That's a lovely analogy, isn't it? Mm. Because seeds can sometimes be kept for thousands of Absolutely years. Absolutely right. And they still germinate. Exactly right. Yes. Exactly so right. we've got these little seeds. Yes. And why are they so dangerous, at least in some cases? In some cases. Well, of course, I think that's really important to bear in mind. The vast majority of viruses are replicating away there. You're probably harbouring some viruses right now yes. and you don't know anything about it. The ones that have, uh, have been with us for thousands of years, many of them infect us, move on to infect somebody else without causing right. any obvious damage to you and, 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 and no illness. Yes. Um, typically, there are exceptions to this, but typically viruses that cause us serious illnesses are ones that have relatively recently right. moved from right. a host species in which they were well adapted yeah. into humans where they're not well adapted and they yeah. haven't yes. negotiated over the generations if, uh, evolution, that evolutionary yes. sort of stasis sure. that, that yes. enables them to... to yes, because after all, if they were that dangerous, yes. they would have wiped the population Absolutely. out and that wouldn't be left. Exactly. Yes. If, a, if a pathogen like a virus kills its ho yeah. host population, it dies as well. as well, exactly. So we've got these relatively recent ones. Yes. Now, why is HIV such a problem? HIV is a real problem. It comes from our closest genetic relatives. It comes from chimpanzees. Uh, we now know, looking at the uh, genome of HIV variants that you can find uh, around the world, that it's come into humans three or four times. Oh, really? Yes, th three or four separate transmissions from yes. chimpanzees into humans. I'll say three right. or four because there are actually two HIVs, HIV1, oh. HIV2. HIV2 right. HIV is one transmission, and HIV1 is three transmissions from I closely see. related viruses circulating still right. today in chimpanzees. And chimpanzees don't show... Chimpanzees are very happy with this They're virus. Happy with it. Yes, they, they, they transmit it sexually from generation to generation, but right. uh, but survive with it perfectly well. So humans have a trouble because they have trouble because that delicate balance of right. a virus that's going to persist in the body and be transmitted on uh, uh, sexually uh, hasn't uh, been acquired. Perfectly, it it's yeah. lasts quite a long time. You can be infected and s feel perfectly well for nine or ten years without without right. treatment. Um, but it's it's not sufficiently stable to last a lifetime as it does in in the chimpanzee. Yes. Now, why is that? It's just a little bit too aggressive. Right. So it's killing too many of the cells that it infects. Oh, now, these cells are important because they're exactly. our protective systems. There are protective they? systems. Our white blood cells. Yes. Um, the main type of white blood cell that, uh, that infects, that causes us problems, is the T cell. So it, it infects yeah. our, our T cells, they're a type of white blood cell that specifically yeah. recognise other cells in the body if they become infected with a different uh, right. pathogen. Right. Uh, and by infecting these cells, HIV destroys your ability to respond to right. other infections. So a really 
common case is tuberculosis. Right. So in order to resist tuberculosis, you need T cells that recognize tuberculosis antigens yes. on yes, infected okay. cells. Okay. Right? And what happens is HIV infects the T cells that you need to resist right. tuberculosis, right. kills off all those T cells, and when they've all gone, the tuberculosis, if you face tuberculosis, can right. rampage through the body and kill you very rapidly. So what you actually die from, if mm. you die from AIDS, yes. isn't actually the virus. Generally not. It's, it's generally the other things. of your defense system, which means that other things exactly. can start exactly. getting it's, it's a little bit that, like that scene in Star Wars, where you have to first of all knock out the yes. defense systems in order to allow the, exactly. the attackers in. Yes. It it's knocks yes. out our defense systems. Well, now we come to the other big question, which I think our viewers would be interested in. <laughs> what hope is there from the work that you and other mm. fundamental scientists are doing mm. that conceivably in the future we can do better than we're doing at the moment because as I understand it although there are treatments they're mm. extremely expensive and unfortunately much of the infection is in poor parts of the world. Absolutely right. Yes, well, uh, this is a very big question. Very large numbers of scientists have been involved in and, and led the, the development of these, these therapies. Um, so I think I'll, I'll talk about those yes. initially rather than our yes. own work because I think it's more relevant to, to your, to your yes. viewers. So you're quite right that um, for 25 years or more, um, people in different drugs companies and research laboratories have been investigating a range of chemicals uh, that had promise at uh, tackling um, HIV and indeed yeah. they worked reasonably well in the test tube. Right. We found very early on however that when you tried to use them clinically um, they would have strong effects at suppressing the virus replicating for a few months and then right. the virus would suddenly re-emerge okay. in a resistant form. So there's a kind of a dormant yes. Population exactly, which isn't accessible. Exactly, the two tricks the virus really has. I think these are the two biggest tricks it has. One that it's capable of existing in two broadly two different forms. One lying quietly in yes. a cell in the body. Yes. The other one busily yeah. replicating. Yes. And your drugs can only affect the, the replicating form. The yeah. second trick it's got is it can change, it can evolve really rapidly ah. and change its sequence. Right. And it's, um, it's, the, it's that combination which is illustrated by this, by this first set of clinical trials on, on, a, on, a, on a molecule called AZT, right. uh, which shows the drug works really well at suppressing the virus, so you can't yes. detect the virus for several months. Right but it comes back from those latent sources in a mutated form that's right. now resistant to the drug. Right. And we, uh, the scientists that worked on this, I didn't work on this, were able to find out where the mutations were and right. why they right. caused resistance to the drug, <clears throat> but it was fully resistant. So what is it sensing? Is it a mm. population of viruses mm. that as it were, is responding to ah. a challenge, or you can see where I'm going. Absolutely. And, or is it... Is it Lamarck or Darwin? Exactly. <laughs> or is it that they're doing this Very all good. the time? Very good. Um, I'm, a, I'm a thoroughgoing Darwinist, okay. I'm afraid. Yes, um, right. but, but in fact, it, it turns out that Darwin explains this right. one perfectly well. Okay. So the virus spontaneously makes errors in its genome every time it okay. replicates. So yes. um, at a very crude sort of level, we could say that the genome of the virus is 10,000 letters long. So not really very big. Not very big. Oh, no, compared no. with a bacterium, it's yes. tiny. But this tiny. is yes. fairly normal for a virus. Yes, OK. 10,000 letters long. Um, and every time it replicates, makes new virus, yeah. it makes about one error on average. OK, okay. Yes. so there's, there's one. Now, most of those, many of those errors are don't affect the virus One in any in way 10, at all. 10,000 is about the error rate anyway, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It yes. is. I mean, there's no yes. proofreading activity. Yeah. What's, what's important about the virus is that many, part, many of the enzymes that it's got, many of the structural proteins it's got, are able to tolerate quite a few changes in the protein structure and still work. Right. Um, so as the virus replicates, it may make um, million, many millions of copies of, of the virus that will go latent. Right. Right. They will amongst them have many, many different mutations, right. some of which will give you resistance yes, to the drug. Yes. So, so you select for those exactly. by treating somebody with the drug. Yes. So if you make a vaccine, you've mm. unfortunately got to make it 
again this, and again. If, yeah. if we moved on to vaccines, it would be the same problem. We've got yes. fundamental problems with vaccines, which we could come back to anyway with, with HIV, but it faces this problem just like yeah. the drugs do. The, the, the virus is capable of mutating very rapidly so that the drug or the vaccine no longer works. Right. Now, the answer for the drugs... Yeah was some beautiful work done mainly in pharmaceutical companies which showed that if you used a combination of drugs that had different mechanisms of action, okay. the virus mutating to be resistant to one drug would make itself more susceptible oh. to another drug. Right. And by triangulating the drug with three dif- uh, the, the virus with yes. three different drugs, yes. it had nowhere to go. No. Okay. And so it was that development of, of these uh, triple therapies, yes. uh, the highly active antiretroviral therapies in about 93, right. Right. that really was the transformation. Yes. Is that why it's expensive? It's to... one of the reasons why it's expensive. Another reason why it's expensive is because... Um, the most effective uh, threesomes came from more than one pharmaceutical oh, company. So, <laughs> uh, so that, that, that caused difficulties. Oh, yes. yes can, uh, and then yes. some of the drugs themselves, for example, the protease inhibitors, one category, were expensive themselves yeah. to make. And of course, yeah, vast well. amounts of money had to be spent on very big clinical trials for each of these yes, of uh, to, de- to, to develop them. So that's exactly. why it was so very, very expensive to start off with. Now, a couple of decades on... Right. The drug companies, ha- and at one point, se- several of the big ones were really in some financial difficulty as a result of the costs that it, they'd sunk in these drugs. So you can see why it was yeah. difficult for them. Several decades on, those costs have been recovered, and so many of these drugs are now available rather more cheaply than so they, they were. They are coming down. They are coming down. Yes. Several of them are now off patent, and there are there are uh, companies in in uh, the developing world that are uh, also able to generate the drugs. So there are ways of deploying, and some of the drug companies have been very imaginative in yes. uh, marketing them at lower prices yes. in the developing world. So it's yes. much better than it was. So there's a real attempt in some countries, like for example South Africa. Uh, this has been in the news quite recently, to attempt to really treat everybody who's affected in a way that will stop them passing on to the next generation. Which would be the permanent. Would be the permanent. nearly permanent. It, it, it would be permanent yes. in this sense, that once, once you'd stopped further transmission, yeah. then people die off naturally. Exactly. And, and so eventually... For it the goes. future. Now that's yes. really quite a tall order, because yeah. it takes many decades exactly. to do that, and you can't yes. have any patches of transmission, and you can't have any neighbours that have, Indeed. have transmission. Yes. But that's really quite a, yes. an exciting sort of approach. So the overall views, mm. I'm getting it mm. on behalf of our viewers, mm. is there is actually hope on the horizon. Yeah, there it's is. not it's not hopeless. And a considerable degree of success Ve- in containing it. Uh, absolutely right. Yeah. Clearly, th- you still have very resource poor countries where just the basic infrastructure for healthcare is not present, as you saw when when yes. the Ebola outbreak happened last year, where even the basics of sanitation, there. and there you can't yeah. seriously uh, yeah. deal with it. Right. But treating it and suppressing the virus is practicable in right. most. Uh, parts of the world where there's sufficient willpower and right. organisation. What it doesn't give you is cure. Right. So, Indeed. Because nobody really feels it's ideal that somebody who's infected with virus right. would have to take every day three drugs for exactly. the rest of their life, exactly. if at all possible. Yes. So what, what people have been looking at for a very long time are either ways of preventing infection through vaccines or rendering people that have the virus latently in their bodies, but suppressed by infection, eliminating that latent reservoir. And there's lots of work on both of those areas, n- but in neither of them do we have any real big breakthroughs at yeah. this stage. Okay. Well, Professor James, thank you so much for talking to Voices from Oxford about a very, very important thank you very much, medical right. problem and some very intriguing fundamental research that gives us some hope in the future. Thank you My very pleasure. much. My pleasure.